Welcome everyone, Aslam and Esikul. This is the second video of the Generative AI course and we will dive deeper into language models. Although this video will be more about the theoretical aspects of language models, um, we will see in action what is happening inside those transformer models. So first of all, I want to highlight three uh, important sources that help me learn about language models. The first one is the attention is all you need paper. And the second one is a very popular blog post by Jay Alamar about uh, transformer models called the Illustrated Transformer. And the third one is the LLM visualization website. You will actually find links to those uh, sources on in the YouTube uh, video. Um, so um, so let's let's um, take a look again at the transformer architecture. Uh, as I said last time, this is a uh, a very gener uh, generic uh, architecture introduced uh, in the attention is all you need paper and it uh, contains uh, two components um, the encoder and decoder parts of the language model and uh, as i said in today's um, ai models um, we mostly use decoder only architecture so this means that we don't really um, do an encoding right and um and um, as, as I said, so um, we start by taking um, uh, text as input and then uh, we tokenize it, we transform it into embedding. So the very first uh, component of um, language model uh, is the tokenizer. And I, wa I wanted to show you this, this component in action. So, um, so what I'm going to do is um, load a tokenizer from Hugging Face. Uh, it's, uh, it's a GPT-2 model tokenizer. So GPT-2 is a um, second series of uh, AI models um, trained by OpenAI and they made them open source, I believe. You can, you can actually find um, the model on Hugging Face. And, um, and of course, um, for every AI model on, on Hugging Face, uh, I'm mostly talking about transform models, you you can load uh, the tokenizer and the AI model. So um, I'm actually using this uh, text snippet here. So basically I, I will load uh, the GPT-2 tokenizer and I want you to take a look uh, what's inside this tokenizer. What is it composed of? So when I, when I try to print the tokenizer instance, um, of course I see um, the model name and uh, a very important parameter is the vocab size and uh, model max length. So, so what do they mean actually? So as I said, a tokenizer learns to split input text into uh, multiple tokens. And these, um, these tokens are actually learned um, from a corpus of text and um, they actually represent a vocabulary. And uh, usually when you train a tokenizer, you specify the vocab size, and then you end up um, with a model that learned um, separate uh, tokens and learns how to separate tokens. Um, we, we, can, we, can, uh, we can actually take a look at this uh, vocab of, of the tokenizer. And uh, basically it's simply a mapping between words and uh, token IDs. So, um, so a token is not necessarily a word, it's not a letter. Sometimes it can be a subword or can, e can even be an entire, an entire word. Um, and um, we have also this parameter called the model max length. And basically, um, um, usually transformer model ha uh, models have a, a maximum context window or context length. And this means that um, if you have 1024 uh, max length, it means that you cannot go beyond 1024 tokens. So if you perform tokenization on a uh, long text and it exceeds 1024 um, tokens, you probably cannot use it with the GPT model. I'll explain later why this is uh, not possible when we go into the um, token embedding uh, layer in the transformer model. Um, and then there, there are a few other um, parameters called special tokens, um, beginning of sentence token and end of sentence token. These are um, like special tokens that specify when a generation or prompt has begun and when 
uh, a generation has ended by the AI model. So basically, when a language model spits out or returns an end of sentence token, it means that it knows it, it finished replying to your question or to your query and the generation is over. Um, so yeah, um, so I guess we, we did take a look into the tokenizer. We can, we can actually try to um, perform tokenization using this, this tokenizer instance. Um, here, my input text is, is um, the capital of France is. So this is an incomplete uh, sentence. And I, I, I want to take a look at the result. So the result is a dictionary that contains input IDs and attention mask. Uh, um, I'll discuss attention mask later, but I want you to, um, okay, uh, take a look at this uh, input IDs. So the input IDs is simply a um, list of uh, token IDs, right? And um, so this means that uh, this, my initial text ended up with six tokens in total. Um, let's, let's, let's try to see what each of these um, each of these tokens actually represent. So I will create a an inverted vocab because uh, the token the tokenizer dot vocab is actually an embed um, a mapping between the token the token string and the token ID, and I want actually the inverse of this. So I will create this inverted vocabulary, and I will I want to take a look what does the token ID 464 represent. So it actually represents an entire word, D, right? And uh, I'll, I'll take a look at the next token. It actually represents capital. So this uh, the second token is also an entire word. And by the way, this, this G basically means um, that this token um, um, shows up right after a space. And then I take a look at the second, the third token and the fourth token. So the fourth token is actually a subword, it's not an entire word, it's a FR. Um, yeah. And then um, let's, um, I think I think we, we covered almost this, uh, this tokenizer part and where we um, start with um, um, we start with um, input text and up end up with token IDs. So what 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 does what does happen with um, with these token IDs? Um, I'll go into the LLM visualization website. I think it's a um, a very um, very nice source to see uh, in detail these transform models. And um, yeah, so. I'll, I'll skip the introduction and the pre preliminaries and uh, let's actually took into uh, take a look into the first layer called the embedding layer so so I this this step where we convert uh, input text into embeddings we already covered by the tokenizer and once we have token uh, IDs we need to create input embedding so input embedding is a is actually a vector that uh, represents um, the features and semantic representation of the uh, actual token. And, um, and we need to represent, for, for, for our input text, we need to represent two important things. The first one is actually the token, and the second one is the position of this token. So, um, so, to create an input embedding, we actually need to combine two um, two vectors: the token embedding and the position embedding. So, so um, this token embedding is actually a lookup table of uh, embedding vectors that are actually learned, and they represent the semantic features of a token. Um, um, the position embedding is um, also a lookup table that. Um, maps between uh, positions and uh, a vector that represents the semantic features of a position, right? Um, so here I, I used a lot the term embedding. It's, uh, it's actually uh, a machine learning component 
Um, you can actually look uh, at the documentation of the uh, in the PyTorch website. Uh, it details what is an embedding. Um, basically, so here it says it's a simple lookup table that stores embedding of a fixed dictionary size. Um, yeah, so embeddings here are learnable weights by the language model. Um, so when we um, when we do backpropagation, we actually do updates into uh, on these embedding uh, layers. Um, so here, uh, I guess um, you might be able to guess the size of this token embedding, right? Um, the, of this lookup table, of course. Um, if, if we go back here and um, take a look at the vocab size, so we have a 50k uh, vocab size. This will be the size of the first um, lookup table embedding, and uh, 1024 will be also a second, the, the size of the second embedding layer. Um, so, yeah. Um, so once we once we look up the embedding vectors, we combine them uh, just by um, summing them from the token embedding and position embeddings, and um, and after after summing both of them, we end up with uh, an an input embedding for for each token in in my text, um, and then we end up by um, so at the end we we convert our input text into an input embedding matrix. Matrix. So this is how we end up with um, numerical numerical representation of our um, input text, right? And um, so I I will I will simply skip the other steps. Of course, um, other other steps in in um, in the transformer architecture include the layer normalization. So this is uh, I guess this is. Um, a layer that mostly applies normalization to your um, input embedding matrix and uh, basically it's very important for training mo uh, model training stability um, but I, I think I think it's it's probably fine to skip this layer and discuss more in detail the self attention layer um, so the self attention is uh, a central and core piece uh, in the transformer model right um, th this is actually why the attention is all you need paper uh, is called like that because attention is very uh, is very important. Um, and in order to um, discuss this uh, attention, I will actually um, discuss it briefly um, using the illustrated transformer blog post. Um, so let me let me actually find it. Yeah. So attention at a self attention at a, a high level. So why do we need attention? So basically we need to learn relationships between tokens inside the input text. Each input uh, each input token um, needs to learn um, needs to attend to other tokens in the input text. So for example, here, um, this token, it, it needs to um, pay high attention to these two, uh, to these uh, tokens, the and animal, because they actually, uh, it actually refers to both of them. Um, this is um, an example of why such a relationship is important to efficiently model uh, language. And um, the way the way we learn about this um, this attention is basically by representing each token uh, using three um, three vectors query key and value right and each um, and, and these values will will be used to um, create another representation for each um, input embedding so um, how do, how do I, do we actually do this? Um, so each of these uh, query key and value vectors are created by multiplying the uh, token embedding by a, um, cor a corresponding weight. So weights for queries, weights for key, and weights for values, and then we end up um, with one vector for each 
for each token embedding. So for the thinking, in this example, thinking token, um, we end up with three, uh, three vectors. For machines, we end up with three vectors. And now if we want for the first token thinking, if you want to attend uh, uh, to the rest of the tokens in the input text, um, we, we, we actually use, um, we actually multiply um, the query vector of the token thinking by the key vector of the other tokens in the input text. So here we multiply Q1 by K1 and Q1 by K2. So this is how the token thinking will attend to the rest of the tokens. And then, um, and then these actually represent scores, right? For each other token in, 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 in the input text, including itself, right? And uh, we apply some kind of uh, normalization and softmax. Um, I guess probably you all know what is a softmax layer. It basically, uh, you end up with scores that sum up to one. So, um, yeah. And then um, once, once we get these uh, softmax, uh, softmax, softmax values or actually, uh, also called softmax attention scores, we can use them to multiply, uh, we, we actually multiply them by the value vectors of all other, um, 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 of all other tokens in the input text and we sum up all of them together. So what, what does this actually mean? We create a new embedding vector or a new uh, vector representation for each uh, token embedding in the input text by attending to the other um, uh, other tokens in the input text and the language model will attend to will pay more attention to the most important tokens compared to one specific token right and the most important tokens will receive a higher uh, score and uh, their corresponding um, value vectors will contribute the most to this um, um, output vector or vector representation so for example this this score uh, received very is actually very high score so its corresponding value will will be uh, will have the highest contribution in the z vector right um, so if if we see this in action um, in the lm visualization website um, we can actually see um, this q um, q vectors creation by multiplying um, and using um, um, matrix multiplication. Actually, what 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 we were about um, what we were discussing was um, um, attention computation for each uh, token for each individual token. But um, we can actually combine um, all of this attention computation for all the tokens by the use of. Uh, matrices. So um, instead of computing each individual um, input embedding, we we combine them all into a an input embedding matrix, and uh, we use matrix multiplication to do all of this in batch, right? Um, so yeah, um, I'll actually skip. Uh, I th I think. Um, uh, I, I think I think this this um... so yeah I think I think this is uh, mostly it about the self attention layer. Um, I think another important layer um, is the final layer, which is uh, mostly the uh, softmax. Uh, layer and the LM language modeling head. How do we end up with uh, hidden states in the transformer model? Um, and how do we convert them to actual logits uh, of tokens, right? Uh, so it's, it's, it's fairly simple. We, 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 just, um, we just have a, a language modeling head weights and uh, they are multiplied by the hidden states inside the language model. And we end up with a logits matrix, um, sorry, a, lo a logits vector, and we multiply, uh, we apply softmax to this uh, logic logits vector, 
And finally, we end up with a um, score um, or probability for each token in the, vocab in the vo vocabulary. So if we, if we want to take a close look into this, um, we can go back to the Jupyter Notebook. And um, I'm, I'm, now I'm going to load the GPT-2 model from Hugging Face. And here I'm using the LM head model. Basically it means that um, the GPT-2 model that I'm going to load also includes this language modeling head, which is very essential for us to um, generate tokens, right? So I will actually take a look at the model architecture. It's um, it, it should be similar to the architectures we just discussed. Um, so the model contains um, two uh, embedding lookup tables. Uh, the first one is for the token embedding and the second one is for the position embedding. And here you can also, this is actually the vocab size and this is the hidden size and this is the maximum context length and this is also the hidden size. And, um, and actually when we discussed the um, attention and la layer norm and the attention head. Um, mm, sorry. So when we discussed the um, layer norm and the attention uh, layers, um, they actually come inside uh, GPT-2 blocks that are uh, repeated tw uh, 12 times, right? Um, so so we don't have, we don't have um, just one uh, attention layer, but we, we need this uh, multiplied uh, or repeated 12 times. And um, at the end, we have this language modeling head. And basically, we need to map uh, the hidden, uh, hidden size from uh, to, to the uh, to the vocab size. So um, so yeah, we uh, we, we need to use this uh, language modeling head to end up with logits for each um, token in the vocabulary. Um, so I'm going to use the model.generate function um, to create a um, generation for my um, for my input text, right? So this is the uh, encoded uh, tokens and we can uh, take a look at the input and basically um, this is this is basically my my tokenized input and then the model starts to generate new tokens until we end up with the uh, um, end of sentence token I will um, take a look at this so I, I will decode or transform my uh, token IDs into concrete text. So the model said uh, the capital of France is the city of Marseille, which is the capital of France. So this is like kind of gibberish, but it's 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 understandable because the GPT-2 model is kind of uh, small, right? And um, we don't uh, we don't really expect high quality generation. Um, but yeah, we can, we can just, I think we can just use a bigger model we we will mostly need uh, GPUs and uh, uh, it, it, the generation will be slower, but um, yeah, we can expect better quality. Um, so this was generation using the generate function, but I also want you to take a look at the uh, generation using a simple forward call. So let's let's make a simple forward call and let's take a look at the output. Um, well actually, let me, let me check the attributes. Yeah, so this output um, has a logit uh, parameter. So let's take a look. So this logit parameter is actually, uh, okay, let's see what's the size. Yeah, so um, 